Aloha, this is Marvin Franklin with the update to the Hawaiian Kingdom Forever. Thanks for downloading the app. We're rolling right now. Sometimes you get us on your Google Play Store application or you can get us on YouTube. However you found us, we're glad you found us at the Hawaiian Kingdom Forever. I'm here with the Attorney General. I've got Tom and Tom has brought some interesting guest here. One guy actually wrote a book. He's a doctor. His name is Michael E. Sala. He's a PhD. He's got galactic diplomacy and is getting to yes with the ET. Tom, tell me more about who else you brought here. He's got an ET shirt. Yeah, definitely. Well, Gowie is the honorable representative from the Kingdom of Hawaii government. He works closely with Uncle Robert and um, uh, Uncle Robert's um, organization down in uh, Kaimu, Kalapana, where the sanctuary and the, uh, uh, the portal are. Um, Gary's over here to attend to the uh, political aspects of galactic diplomacy and uh, its impact on, uh, on the Hawaiian Kingdom. So, uh, Gary, uh, perhaps you could... Uh, yeah, Gary can start off and then we'll uh, talk to Dr. Sala. Yeah, Gary, how are you doing, man? That's a great shirt, by the way. I am Marvin. I've been doing this for a long time, so I know a lot of people are going to be checking out Hawaiian Kingdom forever. And the first thing I, I knew when I saw you when I met you was, what a great shirt. So tell us what you do. Uh, well, I'm the island coordinator for the lawful Hawaiian government. Um, I also happen to be a no republic for the Hawaiian government, a few other things, because we all kind of hold many hats in, in these positions. Um, but Uncle Robert asked me specifically to, to start this project for him. So I'm doing a project for Uncle Robert. It's not about me. It's about Uncle Robert helping him facilitate his dreams. So that's really my purpose here is just to make sure he gets what he wants. All right, well, that's great. We got an ET shirt on. Have you seen the ET or you just got the shirt? Oh, actually, I just found this. I mean, it's coincidental. I just found the shirt in my bag of t shirts and thought I'd put it on this morning. Well, you know, it's funny. I've got this show called America uh, Online, and it's, it's not the AOL, but America on this phone's online. It's coming Saturday on K108. I get all the information. <coughs> but we're talking about ETs. And now we got the guy with galactic diplomacy right here, Dr. Sala. Tell us how you got into galactic diplomacy. Well, I have uh, worked as a citizen diplomat. With us right now from galactic diplomacy. And he's going to tell us how it all started. For me, it began uh, when I learned about an extraterrestrial presence that had not been announced to the general public. Uh, that was in 2001 for the first time when I heard that news. And by 2003, I decided I would make that my full-time academic research. I had been teaching international politics, and I actually had been conducting what was called uh, citizen diplomacy at the time uh, regarding international conflicts. So what I found out during my research was that citizen diplomacy was also necessary necessary in this field of extraterrestrial affairs because extraterrestrials actually have been visiting us. There has been interaction both officially and unofficially and so it was all a matter of how do we step forward as private citizens to interact with these visitors in a way where there would be transparency, accountability and, and the kind of issues that we want to be addressed would actually come forward in a way that we were happy with. Wow, that is crazy because I listen to the radio all the time and we see stuff out in Eden Rock and I'm a believer and I think 95% of the world's a believer now. That other 5% is still on the fence. But when do you think there might be a disclosure from someone maybe in a higher position to the public? Are they trying to keep it from us? Because I know they have to know the skies are alive. When are they going to tell us people? Well, there's two types of disclosure that's important here. There's, there's public disclosure where evidence comes forward, where people come forward to talk about their experiences or documents are released or documents have been le leaked unofficially. So this is the kind of disclosure that has been happening now for many decades and so a lot of information is out there. Then there's the official disclosure, which is when governments actually come forward and make statements concerning this topic. Uh, we are still waiting for that, um, but I think what's going to happen is that public disclosure is going to make official disclosure redundant because basically people already know what is going on. Uh, officials, when they do come forward to make their statements, will be really playing catch-up with what the public is aware of. 
while, while I got this signal here, and everybody's probably intently listening to this, how did they make contact with you? Because I know they talk to me sort of mental telepathy type when I'm sitting out in the forest. I feel all these vibes telling me to look here, look there, feel this, feel that. How are you uh, feeling the experience? Well, there's different ways that contact is made. Uh, and, you know, there's the physical, there's the kind of emotional, there's the dream state. Um, for me, I feel as though there was something within me, almost like a bell or, a, or an alarm that just was waiting for the right time. And that went off for me in 2001, May of 2001, when I heard uh, this Disclosure Project press conference where there were 21 witnesses that came forward to talk about what they knew on this topic. And it was like the alarm had gone off. It was almost like something within me had been programmed where at a certain time in my life, after I had achieved a certain degree of professional recognition and reputation and a track record, uh, that this alarm would go off and then all of a sudden I would just change track completely. So I think as though there's been some kind of involvement in my personal life that goes way back to when I was a child, uh, when this kind of... Uh, programming or the, these kinds of beliefs were instilled into me in a, in a deep way and of course uh, at a certain time in my life that, that all went off and, and this is where I am now. You know, I feel the same way because when I came in today and I saw the ET shirt, do you think that's what they look like, the green heads with the big eyes? Or are there many species like there are many human beings and they might be small or large? I mean, I'm just trying to pick your brain real quick while we got you here and everybody's really intently listening. What do you think our visitors or the people that live here look like? Uh, most of them are, are humanoid looking, which is like two eyes, two hands, uh, two legs, uh, a torso and so forth. Uh, they are the ones that have been primarily interacting with us in terms of how they look. Some look very human, almost indistinguishable from humans, and so they could blend into uh, the population very easily, and that has happened. Others are your, your classic grey-type aliens that we see in movies like Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Um, and then there are other types like uh, with reptilian features. So there are many different types of ETs. They all share the humanoid characteristic or the genotype uh, but then physically they, they differ quite dramatically in terms of height and weight and their capabilities. Wow, the Hawaiian Kingdom Forever is the first to bring you this exclusive and I tell you, you should be happy to get this book opportunity right now. It's Galactic Diplomacy and it's getting to yes with ET. You don't want to get to know what the ET is, you want to get to yes and the best way to do it is to get some background. This guy obviously has been working on this for a while. If you're brand new and you're a novice, you need a book, you need a guidebook, you need a handbook. So why don't you try Galactic Diplomacy since you got to hear this special why you're here. It's kind of, you're here for the Hawaiian Kingdom. We all know that because Hawaiian Kingdom forever. But you happen to tune in on a day when something really exciting is going on. It's not always here at the Kingdom. But now you get a chance to follow galactic diplomacy and maybe be one of the diplomats that they're looking for. <laughs> maybe you could sign up for their uh, kingdom too. But speaking of the earthly kingdom, we got Harvey and Harvey's going to come over here and tell you how you can get your license. But we want to thank uh, Dr. Michael E. Sala, the PhD doctor, for coming by and sharing his galactic diplomacy with our audience. And we want you to get that book, say, getting to Yes with E.T. And I know we're going to get a million hits off of this particular podcast, so just, just remember that. You heard it first. Okay, Harvey, how hey, did they get oh, a license? Oh, oh.